conglomerate which has chunks of different types of rock in it. So that'd be like this rock over no. here that has chunks of different types of rock. That's the quartz conglomerate. So quartz conglomerate and Pocono sandstone are both local rocks. They've been here since they were formed about 300 million years ago. It's about 17 acres of those rocks. It goes out about 1,800 feet long. So out to the other end, about 1,800 feet, which means if you were to walk all the way out and back, it's about two-thirds of a mile walk. So it is a good walk out there. But it's worth it because that's where the really big rocks are. And by that, I mean up to 25 feet in length at the other end. And the rocks at this end are a little bit more smaller and a little bit more rounded than the rocks at the other end. So 1,800 feet long, about 400 feet wide and not nearly as wide as it is long. It goes down between 10 and 12 feet. Oh, so it's fairly deep. So 10 to 12 feet of boulders, and underneath there's more rock. There's bedrock underneath. In some places you might see or hear water underneath the field, and that's because there, this is a very shallow valley, and there's a swampy area to the east, and it drains right through <coughs> the valley. And that's the start of Hickory Run, which is the creek that you pass on the way in. It starts right here under Boulder Field. And because of the water under the field, you might see certain critters, you might see dragonflies flying above the field. They'll hatch from the water. But you don't see a lot of other wildlife here at Boulder Field. Uh, the most common thing to see are little wolf spiders crawling around. Once they feel you coming, they'll probably scatter pretty quickly. But you don't see a lot of slithery, legless, scaly critters. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Snakes. Snakes. That's usually the first question you get. Where are the snakes? Well, there really aren't very many snakes here at Boulder Field. You, know, you see all the rocks and expect there to be snakes, but snakes are cold-blooded. They have to regulate their temperature with the temperature around them. And on a day like today, I'm getting really warm on these rocks, and these rocks warm up very, very quickly. And there's really nowhere for the snakes to hide. It's just too hot. And also, they like to eat, and their lunch consists of rodents, uh, small amphibians, frogs, things like that. And those types of critters aren't going to be on Boulder Field either. So. The best chance you have of seeing a snake is actually right where we're sitting and into the forest. Once you get any further out onto Boulder Field, there's really no chance of seeing any snakes. So don't worry about the snakes here at Boulder Field. And the second question after the question about snakes is usually how did these rocks get here? And does anybody have any ideas, any thoughts, any theories? I've heard it all. Glacier. Glacier had something to do with it. Ice Age. Ice Age had something to do with it. I also heard maintenance men earlier, <laughs> definitely not maintenance men. <laughs> but the story that uh, the scientists tell is just that, it's a story, it's a theory. Well, we weren't here writing it down as Boulder Field was formed, so we're not 100% sure, but they have been studying Boulder Field for the last 50 years. And it would have been very icy, very snowy, very cold, very few trees, no blueberry bushes. It's a completely different landscape, kind of like the movie Ice Age, if you've ever seen that one. <laughs> Uh, like the movie Ice Age, it's very cold, different. Obviously, the temperatures have warmed up, though, and as the temperatures rose, the glacier began to melt, and there was rain instead of snow, so liquid water instead of uh, the snow. And that water was able to get down into the soil, down into the bedrock. If you look at the rock that's around you that you're sitting on, you can see that it has little holes in it and little cracks in it where water would probably be able to get down into. And the water was able to get down into that rock. Overnight and during the winter, it was still very, very cold. It was cold enough for that water to freeze. If you've ever made ice cubes, you know that when water freezes, it doesn't just stay the same size, it actually expands. And it's a very powerful force. It's powerful enough to break rock into pieces. So the water got into the bedrock, froze, expanded, and broke the rock into pieces. All of this rock would have started as one large chunk of bedrock but the water froze inside and broke it into pieces. Another process that was happening here is that these rocks actually moved a little bit. As I mentioned, it's a very shallow valley. If you look to the other end of the field, it looks really flat, but it's a slight uphill as you walk up that valley. And that little bit of slope was just enough for these rocks to move. As that glacier was melting, as there was rain, just this big, sludgy, muddy mess, chunks of ice, chunks of rock, all moving very slowly down this slope in this direction. So we find that the rocks at this end of the field are again smaller and more rounded than the rocks at the other end of the field, suggesting that these have moved a little bit. Another process that was happening here was the frost heave process. During the winter time, water will freeze inside the soil, 
it'll expand and objects can be pushed up towards the surface or objects that are on the surface might be moved a little bit, like your mailbox or other things that you have in your yard can be moved around as the water freezes and underneath it. Here at Boulder Field we find that the largest rocks are at the top of the Boulder Field and the smallest rocks are at the bottom because of the frost heat process happening here. So all three of those processes happening together help to form Boulder Field. You have the water freezing inside the rock, breaking it into pieces, the rocks moving down this direction on that little slope, and uh, frost heat bringing the largest rocks up to the surface. So we had just the right conditions for all those things to take place over thousands of years. There's still one last process that's happening here at Boulder Field, and if you look around the edge, you see a lot of maple trees, a lot of birch trees that are going to lose their leaves here in another couple weeks. And every fall, a little bit of soil is built up along the edge of Boulder Field from those leaves. And slowly, Boulder Field is shrinking as the forest kind of takes its back over. Now, that's a natural process called succession. And because this is a natural area and a national natural landmark, we want it to remain as natural as possible. So even though Boulder Field is shrinking, we're not going to try and have an impact or stop that from happening. It's a very, very slow process. It's probably not even a process that you notice in your own lifetime. It's very slow. But because this is a natural area and a national natural landmark, we ask you to help us uh, keep Boulder Field as natural as possible. You'll notice people haven't done a very good job so far. There's quite a bit of graffiti here. Rocks have been picked up, moved, people have taken rocks home with them. All of those things are, in fact, illegal to do. Now, as you explore, you need to be careful because rocks have been moved and picked up and they can be very wobbly, especially the rocks that are more reddish in color. If they're reddish in color, it means that they've kind of been picked up, moved, turned over, and that bright red sandstone has been exposed. Those are much more likely to be wobbly. They're also much more likely to wear away quicker. So rocks like this with the nice gray coating, that coating actually helps uh, stop acid rain from eating away at the rocks, whereas that bright red coating just kind of opens it up for erosion. So again, be careful as you walk out there. They can be wobbly. You want to have uh, good sneakers on, flip-flops are not recommended. You might even want to go barefoot. Uh, does anyone remember how deep Boulder Field is? 12 to 14. Right, like 10 to 12 feet. So <laughs> things like cell phones, car keys, uh, cute little cameras, <laughs> yeah. you want to make sure Kids. that those are secure. <laughs> uh, shove them down in a pocket, you know, lock them onto yourself or leave them on dry land if you can. So once they're dropped, they're pretty much property of Boulder Fields forever. Probably not going to get them back. Does anybody have any questions before I set you free to explore? All right. Well, if you think of any questions, I'll be around for a couple more minutes. But I thank you for coming out to Boulder Field and Hickory Run State Park, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday. Thank you. Thank you.